2,488 new cases of COVID-19 and sadly 61 more deaths were reported last night. And for more on where we're at with COVID-19, currently we're joined by Tomás Ryan, Associate Professor in the School of Biochemistry and Immunology in Trinity College in Dublin. Tomás, um, first of all, uh, the numbers are stubborn. They're, they're not coming down. Why do you believe that is? Well, there are a number of things that we could be doing uh, to make the numbers come down faster. As to your question as to why they're not coming down, uh, probably a large part of it is the new B117 variant, what we call the British variant, which is significantly more transmissible and now probably makes up most of the virus population uh, in Ireland, though we don't have perfect surveillance on that yet. Okay, so the trans- um, transmissibility uh, of the new variant is the problem. So it's, it's not down to people's individuals' behaviours then? Well, our behaviours could also be stricter. So based on traffic and based on mobility analysis, we're not exactly restricting our movements as much as we did uh, in the first lockdown. So that's going to be a contributing factor. There's still a lot of people going to work. Um, and so we, we could reduce that by reducing what essential workers are. We could reduce the radius around us. We could go from a five kilometer limit to a two kilometer limit. Uh, We could ask the government to engage in things like mass antigen testing, which still hasn't happened in serial testing of healthcare workers. Um, And I think it's also fair to say that, you know, we don't really know how many infections are coming through hospitals and into the communities because we're still working with one eye. We're not testing okay, contacts. So, so, so you would like a stronger lockdown, if I'm reading that correctly. But what difference does two kilometres really make over five kilometres? Like, like if you're avoiding people and if you're if you're engaging in, in the good practices that we believe people are, whether you're three kilometres extra from your house or not makes very little odds. I mean, there's growing international evidence that what happens is that you get seeding from places that are significantly far away from you. So in the case of Ireland, somewhere like Dublin might seed uh, counties around the country, but then the spread happens locally. So the spread seems to happen locally within individual areas. And by having a two kilometer radius, particularly in more densely populated areas, that would certainly reduce okay. the spread. But, you- but honestly, here I think the, the crucial thing is not about how long we need to be in restrictions. I think when we ask that question, we're setting ourselves up for the same problems as before. The question needs to be when can we get control of the virus? When we get control of the virus, then we can start to open and up. And by control and get, of the virus, what kind of level of infection in the community are you talking about? I mean, we at the ISAG think it needs to be about 10 cases a day because when you get to that level of virus case number, that's uh, that's uh, in the zone where our test, trace and isolation infrastructure can manage it. You know the way we don't talk about test and trace as much anymore. That's because since September, we've had too many cases for us to really expect that we can suppress uh, COVID-19 through those methods. So we need to get down. No, and, and, and we levels. know that the testing criteria because the test and trace and isolate system was under pressure was changed. But hang on, the 10 cases per day, even at 50 cases per day, which would be considerably higher than that, that's still one in 100,000. What you're talking about is minuscule. And there's no question, in fact, that our, our, our test and trace capacity, which did up to 176,000 tests two weeks ago in one week alone, can handle more than, than, than 10 cases a day. It's not just about um, how many, how what your testing capacity is. It's about how fast you're able to do the testing, get the information to public health physicians and contact trace and isolate contacts. That's what it's all about. And we need it to be in small numbers for that to be stopping the spread of transmission in the community. And to go back to your question as to how we can make it faster, um, international travel quarantine is going to have to be part of this um, because it's clear that once we get to around 100 cases a day, um, we are not going to be able to suppress this properly if we keep having okay, and, and, new and, cases and just, into the country. Just in time factors, yeah, yeah, and I accept what you're saying about quarantine, although it is fair to say it's community transmission responsible for these cases, not international importing of, of, of the virus. Last question for you, though. Does the vaccine not change this? Insofar as that you're saying, well, we need to get down to 10 cases per day, we could have much higher levels of cases than that. But if vast tracts of our, of our communities were vaccinated so the vulnerable weren't at risk of dying, from this thing, then why would we have to remain closed? 
I think vaccination will make a difference when we get widespread vaccination of 80% of the population. The reality is that 25% of deaths, of potential deaths caused by COVID-19, which are nearly 10,000 people, uh, come from uh, people who are under 70, and the ICUs can still be overwhelmed right. by people who are under 65. So uh, simply vaccinating the vulnerable and then letting it rip is not really an option.